every servant of the wonderful people of Biafra must ensure that there will be no markets on the 1st of October. Nothing will happen. Not even churches. No mosque. Nothing whatsoever. There is going to be total silence across the entire land of Biafra because there is nothing to celebrate about the zoo. The zoo have brought death, misery, mayhem, poverty and impoverishment to our people and that day our silence will speak for us. It will be so loud that the whole world will not fail but to understand that we are fed up with the zoo. There will be no matching. I am telling parents in Biafra land, do not keep your children or drag them up to come out to march for Fulani Janjawudism. If you are celebrating 1st of October, you are celebrating Fulani mediocrity. You are celebrating British neocolonialism. You are celebrating poverty. You are celebrating deprivation. You are celebrating Mietiala terrorism. You are celebrating banditry. And you are celebrating idiocy. And we are not going to have that in Biafra land. So parents be warned. Do not send out your children because there will be terror attacks in Biafra land planned, orchestrated and executed by Mietiala terrorists in Biafra land. They are there now in place. Some of them are even in the army and the police as well. Do not risk the lives of your children. Biafra land will be empty and very silent on that very day. Markets will not open. Markets will not open. Nothing will happen on October the 1st. Very, very important. Sitatum 2020. On precious seat at home first October 2020. On precious seat, you're at home. On first October 2020. Ah, uh ah. -uh. What did they do you say? Oh, this year. Why did they celebrate first October for Niger? Can you get past that corona? No good road, no hospital, no drug, no work, no school, no education, no salary, no pension, no gratuity, no good water, no fuel, no care, no gas, no electricity. Now only that mess when they use our money, they pay for every month when they come Nepal bill. No airport, no seaport, no refinery, no company, no president, no vice president, no court, no judiciary, no security. The killer agents, my only death, mortuary, and ambulance with the sea. Now you don't see, say, when a very become mature, it become a very, very zing. Ah, uh ah, -uh. why you not go think twice now? So, as you don't grow rich, you not get sense, you not get ear, you not get eye to see. Say, Niger, nigga, area, don't jaga jaga, everything. Scatter, scatter, go shot everywhere. This one to tell you, say, things don't fall apart. And no matter that reason, you know, remember, say, for first October, we can celebrate chaos, full and nuclear hessmen, military checkpoints and roadblocks for their front line, sex harassment, DSS don't join, death, joblessness, killings, abduction, intimidation, imprisonment, incarceration, oppression by tone dance, oppression crocodile smile, street customs, so, ah ah, full and melan grabbing, and no money and no money. My people, to celebrate first October, no make sense at all. No one road good. Now you go go and do plenty time. But this one, this one no be road. Not to talk of work for it, no celebrate. And, and no talk like that. For this reason, eh, the indigenous people of Biafra, and as IPOB, under the canopy of Onyendumas and Nam the Kano, don't declare that first October 2020 as oppression sit at home in the whole of Biafra land. As we no get anything for this celebration. Since Ever we don't celebrate them for this order. No school marching, no salute, no market, no business office go open, no keke, no moto, no truck, no moto big way, no street trading, no street football, no church, no ministry, no mosque, no shop, no mommy market, no everything, even good morning market, no go open eye for head that day. Now total and complete lockdown in the whole of Biafra land. They call this one the mother of all sit at home and lockdown. Just the sit here at home now and carry your I see as this who go carry in hand bury herself. No one may. This one a serious matter. No taken for granted. If you dare come out for that day, they don't plan how to get which come you, kill you, bury you without anybody seeing where they bury you. I beg, help pass this message to your neighbor for first October 2020. No oppression sit at home. The mother of all oppression sit at home and lockdown for Biafra land. My people, now the indigenous people of Biafra, IP. Obi, they bring Una this message.
officer of state, every servant of the wonderful people of Biafra must ensure that there will be no market on the 1st of October. Nothing will happen. Not even churches. No mosque. Nothing whatsoever. There is going to be total silence across the entire land of Biafra because there is nothing to celebrate about the zoo. The zoo have brought death, misery, mayhem, poverty and impoverishment to our people and that day our silence will speak for us. It will be so loud that the whole world will not fail but to understand that we are fed up with the zoo. There will be no matching. I am telling parents in Biafra land, do not Keep your children or drive them up to come out to march for Fulani Janjawudism. If you're celebrating 1st of October, you're celebrating Fulani mediocrity. You're celebrating British neocolonialism. You're celebrating poverty. You're celebrating deprivation. You're celebrating Mietial terrorism. You're celebrating banditry and you're celebrating idiocy. And we're not going to have that in Biafra land. So parents, be warned. Do not send out your children because there will be terror attacks in Biafra land planned, orchestrated, and executed by Mieti Yala terrorists in Biafra land. They are there now in place. Some of them are even in the army and the police as well. Do not risk the lives of your children. Biafra land will be empty and very silent on that very day. Markets will not open markets will not open nothing will happen on october the first very very important Sitatum 2020. Oh, precious seat at home on 1st October 2020. Oh, precious seat here when I at home on 1st October 2020. Ah, uh-uh. ah. Why didn't they do you, Seth? Or do you see why did they celebrate 1st October for Niger? Can you get past that corner? No good road, no hospital, no drug, no work, no school, no education, no salary, no pension, no gratuity, no good water, no fuel, no care, no gas, no electricity. Now, only that mess when they use our money, they pay for every month when they call Nepal B. No airport, no seaport, no refinery, no company, no president, no vice president, no court, no judiciary, no security. The killer agents, not only death, mortuary, and ambulance with the sea. Now you don't see, say, when a baby become mature, it become a very, very zen. Ah, ah, why you not go think twice now? So, as you don't grow rich, you not get sense, you not get ear, you not get eye to see. Say, Niger, nigga area, don't jaga jaga, every day scatter scatter go shot everywhere this one not to tell you say things don't fall apart and no me but that reason you know remember say for first october we the celebrate chaos full and nuclear hessmen military chapters and roadblocks for black land such harassment dss don't join people joblessness killings abduction intimidation imprisonment incarceration oppression by ton dance oppression crocodile smile street customs so ah ah full and land grabbing and no money no money my people to celebrate first October no make sense at all. No one road good. Now you go go and do plenty of time. But this one, this one no be road. Not to talk of worker for it, no celebrate. Uh, and no talk like that. For this reason, eh, the indigenous people of Biafra, alias IPOB, under the canopy of Onion Dumas and the Kano, don't declare that first October 2020 as oppression set at home in the whole of Biafra land. As we no get anything for this celebration since ever we don't celebrate them for this order. No school marching, no salute, no market, no business office go open, no keke, no moto, no truck, no moto big way, no street trading, no street football, no church, no ministry, no mosque, no shop, no mommy market, no everything, even good morning market, no go open eye for head that day. Now total and complete lockdown in the whole of Biafra land. They call this one the mother of all sit at home and lockdown. Just to sit here at home now and carry your I see as the two go carry in hand bury herself. No one may this one a serious matter. No taken for granted. If you dare come out for that day, they don't plan how don't get which come you, kill you, bury you without anybody seeing where they bury you. I beg help pass this message to your neighbor for first October 2020. No pressure sit at home. The mother
mother of all operations since at home and lockdown for Biafra land, my people, now the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, they bring Una this message. Officer of state, every servant of the wonderful people of Biafra must ensure that there will be no market on the 1st of October. Nothing will happen. Not even churches. No mosque. Nothing whatsoever. There is going to be total silence across the entire land of Biafra. Because there is nothing to celebrate about the zoo. The zoo have brought death, misery, mayhem, poverty, and impoverishment to our people. And that day, our silence will speak for us. It will be so loud that the whole world will not fail but to understand that we are fed up with the zoo. There will be no matching. I am telling parents in Biafra land, do not keep your children or drag them up to come out to march for Fulani Janjawudism. If you are celebrating 1st of October, you are celebrating Fulani mediocrity, you are celebrating British neocolonialism, you are celebrating poverty, you are celebrating deprivation, you are celebrating Mietiala terrorism, you are celebrating banditry, and you are celebrating idiocy. And we are not going to have that in Biafra land. So parents, be warned, do not send out your children because there will be terror attacks in Biafra land, planned, orchestrated, and executed by Mietiala terrorists in Biafra land. They are there now in place, some of them are even in the army and the police as well. Do not risk the lives of your children. Biafra land will be empty and very silent on that very day. Markets will not open. Markets will not open. Nothing will happen on October the 1st. Very, very important. Ask for Fulani Janja Buddhism. If you are celebrating 1st of October, you are celebrating Fulani mediocrity. You are celebrating British neocolonialism. You are celebrating poverty. You are celebrating deprivation. You are celebrating Mietiala terrorism, you are celebrating banditry, and you are celebrating idiocy. And we are not going to have that in Biafra land. So parents, be warned. Do not send out your children because there will be terror attacks in Biafra land, planned, orchestrated, and executed by Mietiala terrorists in Biafra land. They are there now in place. Some of them are even in the army and the police as well. Do not risk the lives of your children. Biafra land will be empty and very silent on that very day. Markets will not open. Markets will not open. Nothing will happen on October the 1st. Very, very important. Sit at home 2020. On sit at home on 1st October 2020. On sit when open at home. On 1st October 2020. Ah, uh-uh. ah. What did they do you say? Oh, this year. Why did they celebrate 1st October for Niger? Can you get past that corner? No good road. No hospital. No drug. No work. No school. No education. No salary. No pension. No gratuity. No good water. No fuel. No care. No gas. No electricity. Now only that mess with the use of money. They pay for every month when they call Nepal B. No airport, no seaport, no refinery, no company, no president, no vice president, no court, no judiciary, no security, the killer agents, my only dead, mortuary, and ambulance with the sea. Now you don't see, say, when you very become mature, you become a very, very zen. Ah, ah, why you not go think twice now? So, as you don't grow rich, you not get sense, you not get ear, you not get eye to see. Say, Niger, nigga, earlier, don't jaga jaga, everything. Scatter, scatter, go short everywhere. This one to tell you, say, things don't fall apart. And no more for that reason. You know, remember, say, for first October, we can celebrate chaos, full and nuclear harassment, military checkpoints and roadblocks for Black Friday, sense of harassment, DSS don't join, people, joblessness, killings, abduction, intimidation, imprisonment, incarceration, oppression by ton dancer, oppression crocodile smile, street customs, so, ah ah, full and melan grabbing, and no more, no more. My people, to celebrate first October, no make sense at all. No one road good. Now you go go and do plenty of time. But this one, this one no be road. Not to talk of work for it, no celebrate. Uh, and no talk like that. For this reason, eh, the indigenous people of Biafra, alias IPOB, under the canopy of Onyendumazan Namdekan, don't declare that first October. 
2020 as oppression sits at home in the whole of Jafra land as we no get anything for this celebration since ever we don't celebrate them for this order no school marching no salute no market no business office go open no keke no moto no truck no moto big way no street trading no street football no church no ministry no mosque no shop no mommy market no everything even good morning market no go open eye for head that day now total and complete lockdown in the whole of Biafra land they call this one the mother of all sit at home and lockdown just to sit here at home now and carry your IC as the two go carry in hand bury herself no one may this one a serious matter no take and for granted if you dare come out for that day they don't plan how to get which come you kill you bury you without anybody seeing where they bury you I beg help pass this message to your neighbor for 1st October 2020 your oppression sit at home the mother of all oppression sit at home and lockdown for Biafra land my people now the indigenous people of Biafra IPOB they bring Una this message officer of state every servant of the wonderful people of Biafra must ensure that there will be no market on the 1st of October nothing will happen not even churches no mosque nothing whatsoever there is going to be total silence across the entire land of Biafra because there is nothing to celebrate about the zoo the zoo have brought death misery mayhem poverty and impoverishment to our people and that day our silence will speak for us it will be so loud that the whole world will not fail but to understand that we are fed up with the zoo there will be no matching i am telling parents in biafra land do not keep your children or drag them up to come out to march for Fulani Janja Buddhism. If you are celebrating 1st of October, you are celebrating Fulani mediocrity, you are celebrating British neocolonialism, you are celebrating poverty, you are celebrating deprivation, you are celebrating Mietiala terrorism, you are celebrating banditry, and you are celebrating idiocy. And we are not going to have that in Biafra land. So Good evening, wonderful people, great Biafrans. Wherever you are on the face of this very planet, we welcome you to hopefully an exciting edition of our live presentation on this very day, this very Sunday, the 27th day of September in the year of our Most High Elohim 2020. The time now is precisely three minutes past the top of the hour, three minutes past 7 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra, the same number of minutes past the top of the hour, regardless of where you are, where you're listening to us from. I welcome you and I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. As I welcome you, please, it is my duty to encourage you to welcome other people as well, especially those of them who may not have participated in what we are doing for them to be a part of this very gospel, this very message of hope and restoration. And as you are doing so, I hope you have joined us via IPOB community radio app which all of you should and must have on your phones and your smart devices right now every internet enabled device especially the portable ones should be able to offer you access to download IPOB community radio it is very low data it doesn't cost you very much it is far more cheaper for you to even listen via IPOB community radio than to do so on Facebook it is far more cheaper in terms of data we are also live this evening on YouTube we are live on our FM in Biafra land you know Duduwa land in Lagos to be precise we are in Abuja we are in Kanu as well and most of Biafra land you can get us on 102.1 we are also on satellite we are on Radio Biafra app on tuning 
and a whole host of other apps as well that you can get us on. As you well know, those workers of iniquity Facebook will do everything they can to suppress, to hide, to stop us from preaching this very gospel. As they have failed in the past, so are they going to fail today. And it is, in fact, it gives me a lot of pleasure to say that the pressure we are putting on the zoo is yielding immense results. And every glory belongs to Chukwokekabi Amaprumikanina in heaven. My name is Enam Dekan. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra all over this very world, the largest mass movement on the face of the planet. And I am sure come the 1st of October, in conjunction with our Odudua brethren, we are going to let the world understand that the zoo has truly come to an end. I am the director of radio Biafra and Biafra Television, and by the very special grace of the Most High Elohim, a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. I welcome each and every one of you, but we must pray before, because what we have for you is immense this evening. So we are going to pray to seek the grace, the face, the authority from heaven, under which we preach this very gospel every blessed day of our lives because though i may not be on air propagating this very gospel of redemption millions upon millions of people are doing so right across the face of this very planet earth and they are the true warriors and the true soldiers we must pray i'm going to pray the lord's prayer i don't know why i love praying it these days because it reminds us of the preeminence the supremacy and the omnipotence of one true creator of the heavens and the earth, and to whom every glory and every adoration belongs to. Because Yeshua, Jesus Christ, to some of you, was asked to teach the disciples how to pray. And he said, Our Father who art in heaven in recognition of the supremacy and the irreducibility of Elohim, Adonai, El Shaddai, Chukukikabi, Amapurumi, Hanina. Hallowed be thou name because there is no other name more than that. We come before thee, we present this family before the Imuchina Kakane Tuhano in praise and in adoration of your holy name because in good we will praise your name, in bad we honor thee as well. Let thy kingdom come, which is Biafra, on this earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever we pray. He say, he say, he say, the Lord's prayer that Jesus Christ prayed, Yeshua prayed. To let mankind understand that there is only one God in heaven. This evening we preach the gospel of heaven. That mankind may bear us witness. That in their time they came and this very gospel was preached. And the whole world heard them. And those who were previously in bondage we are set free. This evening we start with the damnable zoological republic. The funniest thing about this zoo is that people are foolish, but they don't know how foolish they are. This evening, we are going to peel away the veil of ignorance and of stupidity to allow them to be able to reason properly like human beings. If you all can recall, in 2015, the man that Jonathan, should I say, ill-advisedly appointed to lead Ainek. His name is Atahiru Jega. He's a Fulani Janjaweed. He installed the dead Buhari, whose spirit is wandering endlessly in the desert of Arabia, because that's where he was buried and that is where he is. His body can no longer be brought back to the zoo. That is the sacrifice he has had to make in order for the total Islamization of the damnable zoological republic to be accomplished by the lives of Garabashi and Atahiru Jaga. You must listen to me very, very attentively this evening, morning, afternoon, or night, depending on where you are. This was the man who was responsible. And this is the game that the Fulanis play all the time. 
this evening we are going to ask ourselves who are those responsible for making the lives of the people in misery who are those responsible for the spate or should i say the ceaselessness of terrorism in the zoo who is to blame after every analysis you will come to the inescapable conclusion that fulani is to blame but what, how they manage to convince all of you to look elsewhere for your problems or for the problems that they have created is something that I cannot begin to fathom. Uh, Jega said something very important. He said, Nigeria's future is at stake because they now know we have gone into an alliance with our Oduduwa brethren and they know that this breed of Oduduwa agitators <laughs> it's not like anything they have seen before. This very crop is serious about liberating Yoruba land from the damnable zoological republic. They know how fanatical we are about Biafra. So they are panicking. And Fulani will do what Fulani always does to try to dampen down the tension and try to convince you with warm words to try to deflect and divert your attention away from the real culprits of the, the miserable state that the zoo is in. The very article that he, I'm sure, that he co-authored is called Nigeria's Future at Stake, Warns Jega, published by a zoo newspaper. Now listen very carefully, please. The former chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, from one full animal to another, because they need to control those who goes into power, his name is Professor Atahiru Jaga. On Friday, warned that Nigerians' future was at stake due to misgovernance. That is the word to note, misgovernance. In other words, misrule, corrupt leadership, inept leadership, leadership of flowing mediocrity. He said misgovernance, which means that the country hasn't been governed properly. But this was the same man in concert with Obama decided to rig somebody they know is patently on feet into power in 2015. Luckily, the idiot died in 2017. And ever since, they have brought one plasticine after another with a hyper-reality face mask to deceive all of you gullible zoo animals. Out of fear and cowardice, of course, none of you ever rose up to point out the obvious. Only us. Misgovernance. What I want to ask Atahiru Jaga is, who are those governing the zoo? Who is misgoverning the zoo? The same full animal that they put into He himself is a full animal. If you read this thing, you think he is blameless. He's got nothing to do with it. This was the man in cahoot with Obama and the rest of them decided to rig somebody they know is hopeless into power in 2015. Buhari, the late Buhari, was not an intellectual. He wasn't particularly an educated man. He didn't go to school. Of course, due to quota system, they kept pushing him because he's one of the few Janjaweeds who can actually stitch two sentences together in English, albeit in broken English. He was promoted. He was a genocidist. He was a murderer, a mass murderer and a killer who should have been tried in The Hague and jailed. But Britain, of course, is always there to save them. Britain is the godfather of Fulani people. They are there to ensure that the reign of mediocrity continues. They are there to ensure that Fulani's continuation in power is unimpeded. To also allow them all restricted access to the natural resources we have in Biafra, which is mainly oil and gas. As simple as that. Everybody knows that. It's not hidden. Jega stated this, he was saying this at the inauguration of a 34-member policy advisory committee of the PROP, the old party of Aminu Kanu, People's Redemption Party, in Abuja on Friday. You know what he said? He asked Nigerians not to allow bad people to continue to misgovern the country by contributing to the electoral process. Now they want to shift your attention once again to go and vote. PVC, get your PVC, go and vote. When this idiot was the fool responsible for putting somebody they knew was so inept, somebody they knew was an ethnic jingoist, somebody they knew who was a bigot, somebody they know 
will entrench nepotism. Somebody they know whose aim and mission is to Islamize, to finish the work that Othman Danfodio started. They knew all this. It was their plan. But look at how Ujega very cleverly have removed himself to ask you, uh, don't, don't allow bad people. So if you're saying this in this day and age, in this era, in 2020, that means that bad people are in Asorok. That's what he's saying. Don't allow bad people to continue. It's simple English language. What he's trying to say is that there are bad people in Asorok. And if Buhari were to be alive, this idiot that put Buhari in power couldn't have been making such a statement. It is called common sense. Of course, it is quite elusive when it comes to black people. We don't reason very well. We don't put two and two together to give us four. Bad people don't allow bad people to continue to misgovern. As I've been warning you over the years, every time they focus your eye on election, or maybe in 2023, you would elect somebody who is reasonable, who would turn things around. But then they will turn around and still tell you, it's our turn in the north. We are born to rule. We must rule. And Britain, of course, will put their usual pressure. Those of you from the East will be bribed. Those of you from the West will be blackmailed or cajoled into submission. And the Janjaweed will emerge from somewhere to become your president to make your life a misery. Atahiri Jaga, you should contribute to the electoral process once again. So forget all your pains in 2020. In fact, in, in 2019, forget your, all your sufferings of 2020. Forget 2021. Forget if you may even live to see 2023. But please hope on 2023. Like those that will say, ah, Allah is a liberty, so the kingdom of heaven is very near. Better themselves that are here with their private jets and having fun. They are here living in mansions, living, enjoying the heaven on this earth, but telling you to hope that heaven is coming. The same thing they are doing. These are the people that have stored, stolen so much money to advance Fulani, Janja, Buddhism across the entire zoo. Look at how he's coming out to speak. So that the Western diplomats will read this thing and say, oh, he's a very good man. He is not, not for bad governance, but he was the one that insisted that Jonathan must leave office. I know I'm mentioning the ex-president Jonathan this very evening because um, <laughs> some ideas have come again. <laughs> But they are going to fail, and they will fail very woefully. I will continue. The committee is made up of Jega, Mr. Richard Umoru, Professor Ifani Anibogo, Dr. Minu Aliyu, Dr. Abdul Kader, Issa Professor Ahmad Asand, uh, Ahmadu Sanda, Hajia Aisha to Dankani, among others. The former INEC boss, who is the member of the committee, said, I believe that all Nigerians can no longer sit on the fence. Are you listening? You can no longer sit on the fence. As everybody needs to contribute to the cleansing of politics in Nigeria. Everybody, now they know that things are bad. They have always known that is always their game plan. But because 200 million people or thereabout are so, are saturated with stupidity. Nobody can rise above the parapet of ignorance, I will call it, to see full on a janja wood for what they are. All of a sudden, you are now acknowledging that the zoo is bad. The zoo is bad, of course, because for the very first time, there is meaningful alliance between the East and the West, so they are now panicking and they are worried. They have gone to the usual suspects, though, that they give money to, 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 to massage your foolishness. They give them money in you know, Ohanes and all those places, all those so-called elites. No electricity, no light, no good roads, no hospitals, nothing. People are dying. They're full on a janja with everywhere, slaughtering and killing people. All you do is you answer elites, <laughs> the political class, political elite. Elite is in my foot. They have given them a call and they've said, we know nothing about any alliance. But how come that they have now joined hands together? Now, Fulani have realized that things are bad. Oh, let's start doing something. Let us focus their mind and their, and their, and their, their should us attention on 2023. Let us use the electoral process. They know that electioneering cannot change anything in the zoo. They know that they understand that. That was the system that they built. That was the system that Britain helped them to build. They entrenched Fulani Janja Buddhism. I want the reason why we preach the way we do is for people to be able to reason, to have the gumption, to have the, the capacity to see where these criminals are coming from. 
All of a sudden, all of you must contribute to cleanse politics in Nigeria. But all these years, in 2019, you didn't say the same thing. Because you knew that, uh, that uh, Jubril was going, uh, wearing Buhari's face as a mask. You know that very well, silicon mask. You know that very well. You did not say this thing in 2019 before the elections. No, as you people did against Jonathan, you never said anything in 2019. He's now having rigged a complete, I don't know, a nobody into office because nobody exists as a president. It is somebody wearing a face mask, claiming his Buhari. All of a sudden, you have now come out. You have now realized, you have now realized that things are bad. <laughs> you see how clever they fool and they think anyway they can deceive some of you they cannot deceive IPOB and hopefully in time to come you'll do the watch that as well you cannot defeat people who are in more intelligent than you are they're directing your attention towards politics once again he went on to say there should be no fence sitters nobody should sit on the fence our future is at stake all of a sudden Fulani is saying our future is at stake they are saying it because the continuation of one nigeria is what they want the continuation of one nigeria will make them even give more money to dangote dangote will now own every industry will own every critical vital sector of the economy Fulani will be everywhere there will be ruga that's why they want you to continue because before I came on air today, I was thinking, if you had told Aziki where in those days, Zeke of Africa, that this Nigeria he's fighting for will result in his people being killed, will result in a bony state almost becoming a caliphate, a bony state, it's almost a caliphate, if not for IPOB. He wouldn't believe it. If you tell the same Aziki where, that the same useless country you're fighting for, they will come back to gerrymander the boundaries in your own homeland, that people who were previously evil will now rise up and say we are no longer evil because they have been brainwashed and made useless by Fulani Janja Buddhism. He wouldn't believe it. He was fighting for one Nigeria, but in the process he was losing the soul of his nation. And that's what happened to us today. Now, that is what they're doing. They always focus you on one Nigeria. Let us build Nigeria. They know Nigeria is not viable. They know that Nigeria is more or less a company. It's a British company with a flag and an anthem. That's all that is to it. And a defined boundary. It is still a British company till tomorrow morning. It is still that same Royal Niger company. The same. It doesn't change. It is the same. Oh, every blessed day. The full is they understand it. Britain that is controlling the zoo, they understand it. Once they keep as a fool, only an idiot will rise up and say, oh, I am Nigerian. I want to be part of Nigeria to make Nigeria great again. I want to help salvage the zoo. You cannot any effort you're making any 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 particular endeavor you make towards sustaining one nigeria means that you are finished means that you're finished somebody saying here somewhere the which radio is off they say it's off not yet working is off is work i don't know what i'm talking about i know our radios are working please i don't need any stupid distraction today are you following me they want you to focus on election 2023. Maybe by then you will vote in a messiah. This was the same people that told us that Buhari was a messiah. He was coming to save everybody, to save everything. The idiot ended up making the zoo Nigeria, the most terrorized country in Africa, and number three in the whole world. This was an idiot that came into power claiming that they are going to turn everything around. With the help of Obama, with the help of Tinubu, they convinced them. And I'm very, very glad that all of, you know, finally, finally, <laughs> our people in the West, <laughs> the Yoruba race, can now see that thing we have always seen, that nothing good can come out of these people. Nobody should sit on the fence. You must get into politics. You must get involved. You must be part of what we are doing. What is that nonsense that you're doing? Are you going to give us electricity? No, no let us assume for one second that this should stand. Who is going to build roads? Is it that one that they, they put to, uh, they build one column, they pour concrete into, into, uh, on top of rods, and they say they have built a bridge? Is this the type of, is this the pace of development that you need or you require to absorb all those who are graduating from universities? Or have all of you, all of a sudden, accepted that you will go to school, get a degree, but you will never work in your life, or you never practice that very discipline that you studied in school? I don't want, I, just, I don't want idiots to listen to me tonight. I want people who are reasonable, people that have got some semblance of gumption, people who can actually sit down and analyze things. 
mediocrity upon mediocrity that is what you're saddled with and this man talking is full and this man talking is the same idiot responsible for foistering the same bad people on all of you he is referring to Garaba, i don't know who is the leader of the Kaba. i think is um is um they are afraid to announce the death of um of um maman daura so i don't know who the leader of the cabal is because i can curse you and you will die that is as simple as that i don't know who the, i think maybe is um El Rufa, i'm not too sure or maybe they are fronting Garba Sheikh, who nobody is quite sure as to who is now controlling the cabal because there is no president, there is no vice, there is no chief of army staff. That is taken, that is a fact, it is gospel. He is now referring to them as bad people. I want all of you that still, this was the man that Einek used to rig the late Buhari into power. This was the man that was conniving with Cameron, conniving with Obama to make sure that an Islamist ascends into the throne of governance in the zoo in Asorok, the late dead Buhari, who is now lying in a shallow grave in Saudi Arabia, which nobody can dispute. No sensible human being can dispute. They have not given birth to you. This is the man now that the same fool and the same people that treat you into the mess you're in, the same man that gave you high petrol price, kerosene, everything, making your life a misery, is now coming to you and telling you, let's get rid of that. Whereas his own account in, 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 um, in Dubai is overflowing with, with hard currency. And he's there. And you fools will listen as usual. But I thank heavens that people are now beginning to wake up. They can now wake up and smell the coffee. People are now realizing what we realized or what we accepted or acknowledged very many years ago. That is the way they operate. He will not accept that they made a mess of everything. That is how the zoo operates. The nepotism, as I tweeted a few days ago, the nepotism by this present Fulani cabal of which Atahiru Jega was those that instituted it in the first place. The Islamic terrorism sweeping through the zoo Nigeria is they are all part of the plot to Islamize the zoo. It is their trickery, their takia. You know, they come and they trick you, they lie to you, they deceive you. Some of you fell for it. Those that call themselves Niger Delta, they fell for it. All the deals have been falling for it. All their divide and rule. Middle Belt is suffering. Because as I'm on air this evening, I can tell you, those who are from Plateau State, those of Biram origin. Go and ask them in Biron. Go and ask them before, because sometimes some of you don't know what people are suffering in the so-called North and even Middle Belt. You, you have no idea. In Biron, for instance, they, they have been telling them one Nigeria, their leaders, oh, Biafra is the problem, and Igbo man is the problem. Oh, one Nigeria, one Nigeria, one Nigeria. And now today in Biron, in Plateau State, I am stating a fact. There is no bureau man or woman who is a local government chairman. They are all Fulani. This is something that I want people to understand. The more you agitate for one Nigeria, the more you campaign to keep Nigeria one, the more you are placing your ethnic group at risk of extinction. If you go to Biron, go to all the local government areas in Plateau State occupied by Biron people. If you go there now, you will see it for yourself with your two naked eyes. Four money have taken over. Even ordinary local government chairman, they cannot even get. Are you listening very carefully? I want people to understand the damage you stand to do to your people in time to come. Maybe by that time you'll be dead. Right now, Azikiwe is dead. Awolowo is dead. All the people that fought for one Nigeria is dead. They never knew that by fighting for one Nigeria that they are inadvertently advancing the full army conquest of their own people. Understand this very clearly. Now, these same people, it is not by accident that Nigeria's security forces are led by extremist Fulani Islamists in uniform. All of them, be it police commissioner, be it in the army, they planned this many, many years ago to occupy every sensitive position and to use that position to advance Fulani terrorism, be it through Mieti Yala, be it through ISIS in West Africa, be it through Boko Haram or Fulani bandits. Who are funding these people? Are you telling me that somebody from Mali who is a terrorist can carry AK-47 all the way from Mali and travel all the way to Agadu to 
to kill people and no, no roadblock, nothing, nobody stopped him. Is that what you're telling me? Because I want people to engage their thinking faculties. I want people to be able to reason. Our job here is to enlighten. It is to educate that people may be able to reason. That's all we are doing. Are you telling me they say they are foreign bandits? Okay, let's assume that foreign bandits came from Niger, from Mali, from Chad, from elsewhere, all the fallen and terrorized territories to come into the zoo. Now, when they got into Nigeria, who now gave them the guns <laughs> they are using to kill people? These are simple questions I expect the so-called intellectuals to be asking. I expect those who claim that they need to be asking. It's a very simple question. You claim that these people, they are foreigners. Did they, the weapons they are using, did they bring it to them as they were coming? Or did they get it when they got into Nigeria? It's just a very simple question. But people don't ask these questions. And I have, I have tried to educate and to school black people to understand the reason why you have a law court. To understand the reason why somebody can sit in judgment or let's say a jury, a panel of jury. And you, two people were fighting, for instance. And police was called in the process. The police took two of them to the station and charged them and referred the matter to court. Nobody was there to witness what happened. In the court, you will be called upon as an accused to state your case you state. And after that, the judge will ask the other side, please, do you have any questions? It's called cross-examination. Because through cross-examination, you find out who is lying and who is telling the truth. That is why you ask questions. But in all the years, should I say in all the years of colonialism and what I call damaging European influence in Africa, we have forgotten that there is a very simple way to find out who is lying and who is telling the truth. Even Solomon used it in the Bible by asking questions. That is how you know who is lying and who is telling the truth. And what are those questions that you ask of the zoo? If, you, if it wasn't your intention to Islamize everybody in the zoo in Nigeria, why is it that every sensitive security position is occupied by a Fulani person? Simple question. If you claim that you want to advance the country, you want to make things better, how come the head of every sensitive parastatal is a Fulani person? If you claim you want to provide employment, and people don't know what employment means, they have no idea. The thing is, the job of the government, of course, is not. The, the government's job is to create an enabling environment to allow entrepreneurship, to allow people with ideas to create jobs and opportunities for the population. That's what it means. How come if your motives were not sinister how come you shut down four refineries four refineries that could employ thousands upon thousands of people nmpc owns them run by fulani nmpc run by fulani you have not refined not one gallon of fuel but you gave the license to your brother a fellow fulani then got to build a refinery we are shutting down. I don't know if people are. I'm, I, I can't. When I say this thing, they say you insult black people. If people reason this way, why should they not be insulted? I am referring to Facebook. I want to ask Facebook when people behave this foolishly, don't I have the right to insult them? You have four refineries, four, four built by not even full on the governments built by people that saw the future of of or, or, or that wanted to build a nation babangida was instrumental babangida's economic plan was the best i'm just telling you the truth babangida in the post-war era since 1970 the only person who has come close to enacting or should i say to formulating a viable economic policy is only babangida Go and look at the industries he built. Is there? It speaks for itself. Now tell me why they will close down 
Kaduna refinery, Igwacha refinery, One refinery, Wari refinery. These are refineries. Think of how many graduates could have been employed. Think of the spin off industries. There is something called economies of scale in economics. Think of how people could have benefited the people in the area, even those selling mama put. All these things I'm telling you is not rocket science, it's common sense. Now, ask yourself, why would a people that claim, let's join hands together, let's vote and move the country forward, why would you close down all these refineries? Give the license to your brother to have a monopoly over the supply of petrol to 200 million people, making him even, even richer than he already is. And then you turn around and tell me, let's build, let us build the country. Build what? Build what are you building? What are you building? Build what? I'm asking you. With bare hands? You are in a country. You are telling me that you are in a country. You are telling me you are from Biafra land, the east. That they call South South and South East. You claim you are from there. Your own son is the transport minister, Ameji. He has not built a railway in his land. But he's building a railway to Niger Republic. And you're okay with it. You Somehow you're normal. You get up in the morning and you go to work or you go to church. Everything is okay. And you're telling me that you're well. You're telling me that your, your senses are intact? Of course it's not. You see, that's what makes you black. Because you do not reason. The difference between black people and white people is that white people reason. They submit everything to the altar of reason. Black people do not reason. The animals in the zoo in Nigeria, they don't reason. Those that you call politicians, they do not reason. They can't think very well. That is why I am impressed with this Odua group that wrote to the Sultan. I'm going to analyze this later this very evening. This tells you all you need to know about the damnable zoological republic that's been captured in this very letter. And I ask myself, if this, if the information contained in this letter has been in the, in the public domain, in the open, for decades, for decades, for decades, why would anybody be antagonistic towards IPOB? Why would anybody be against self-determination, agitation, by people that want to be free? That is something that I, I cannot get my head around. You have people who are from Biafra, from the East. You have people even from the West. You have people from the Middle West that even have some Biron people who are in the army and in the police looking for agitators to kill because of the, of, of, should I say, their backwardness. They don't know that their land has been taken over. There are Biron people who are in the army. There are Biron people who are in the police. If you ask them to go to MNA and shoot IPOB people, they go and they shoot. But their own village, their own local government has been taken over by the Fulani people. When I, I think of such people, I know that black people are intellectually deficient. I'm being honest. I'm not insulting anybody. I am just stating the facts so you understand it. If what I'm saying is so painful, then you try and change. And Odua go president to the Sultan of Sokoto. Open letter to, to the Sultan of Sokoto, Abubakar Said, and the Fulani leaders. The Sultan of Sokoto and Fulani leader, His Eminence Al Haji Abubakar Said. Now listen, the State of the Union. We must note first of all that that is an anomaly. Nigeria is not a nation. It is a contraption. It has never been a nation. If you doubt me, please go to Google and Google the meaning of the word nation. That is why I keep saying that in Biafra land, we will build universities with caution. Because as I said last week, the, the Nigeria as a, as a, as a contraption is not advanced enough to have a university because people do not learn. If you know the meaning of a nation, there is no way anybody in their right senses would refer to the zoo, Nigeria, as a nation. It is not. Now, I'll read this letter for you. It says here, we write this letter to you considering your importance as the head of the Fulani people in Nigeria, the Sultan of Sokoto. He is. You are also the head of Fulani Muslims in Nigeria. Yes. He is also the head of the religious, every religious group he is the head. He is also the head of all traditional rulers in Nigeria. Only Fulani. Nachinama, they move cattle from place to place. 
Now listen, it is our hope, according to this Odua group, to the Sultan, that you will be able to share the thoughts expressed here with the 7 million Fulani people in Nigeria through your traditional means of communication. Fulani people in Nigeria, they are not up to 10 million. Not up to 10 million in a country of supposedly, supposedly 200 million people. 7 million only is holding all of you hostage. You are all hostages, all of you. You have been kidnapped. Some of you may not have been kidnapped in the real sense of the word, like taking you away or, or you know, raping Boko Haram, raping you or whatever. No. Uh, or like Leah Shwebu or impregnating you, converting you forcibly to Islam. No. But all of you in your homes right now listening, you are all, vit you are all victims of Fulani kidnapping. You have been kidnapped politically, kidnapped religiously, you've been kidnapped socially, you have been kidnapped economically. You are nothing. Fulani have reduced all of you to their level, to their ginger wood level. That is what they have succeeded in doing. But unfortunately, some of you are too blind or poorly educated to understand it. I'll read the letter from Odua Group. Very, very interesting. I love it. <laughs> Listen attentively, please. I beg of you. We write to honor you with this letter, given the floundering opportunities for a dialogue on the future of Nigeria, which has eluded the various ethnic groups in Nigeria and which may not enhance itself too soon. Given the drumbeats of armed violence and extremism perpetrated largely by your people, this Odudua group is now telling the Sultan, all the armed conflict, all the violence in Nigeria is being caused by Fulani people. And the fleeting prospects of a national dialogue, and to have a national dialogue, they said, no. We will kill you. We will kidnap you. We will vulgarize you. We will take over your waterways. We are Fulani. We will do all we can. After all, Britain is backing us. We can do anything we like. Seven million. <laughs> Messing up the lives of nine, 193 million people. Now, tell me why those 193 million people are not fools. Are Fulani people more intelligent than you are? Are they more educated than you are? Ask yourself, how come all of you are sitting down there talking your useless one Nigeria as Fulani are busy encroaching to your towns, your villages, using terrorism, using everything they have in the books? I recall somebody who wanted to contest for election in Biafra land a few years ago. You know what they told him? People, you'll be shocked. People told him, please go to the north and look for one emir or one al Haji to sponsor you. So for you to govern a state in Biafra land, you have to go to the north to get Fulani seal of approval, as uh, the Supreme Court Governor of Imo State did. I want people to appreciate this very broadcast this evening. Because according to this Yoruba group, they have told the Sultan to his face, Sultan of Sokoto, your people are the ones of Fulani, the same Fulani telling you about, about building the nation. They know that the best way to build the nation will be through a sovereign national conference, a dialogue to determine how people are going to live. They know that, but they will not ask for that. The only thing they will offer you is keep going to polling station. Keep voting until one day, miraculously, one person will emerge as a good person. And then will lead you into El Dorado, the promised land, paved with gold and silver, where the rivers will be flowing with honey and milk. Common sense. Ask anybody, what is the solution to the problem in the zoo that will tell you it is a national dialogue by people who are serious, not by the compromised idiots? They know themselves. Will they do that very thing? The answer is no. They will tell you, go and vote. Go and vote. Because they know if you vote, they will rig. They know if you vote, they will control. Don't you know that? I love this Yoruba group. What is their name again? I, I will go get to their name later on. Given the drumbeats of armed violence caused by full and full and people are the ones killing people. Even a national dialogue, there is no more hope. They said restructure and Fulani said no. They said review constitution, Fulani said no. Because a Fulani man wrote the constitution. Had, had it been any other person that wrote that constitution and, and, and foisted it on, on Fulani, they would have changed everything by now. 
7 million people enslaving all of you, 193. They come to you, they get one or two of your corrupt leaders, and they give them some chicken change. They go for a meeting in the house of Edwin Clark. Edwin Clark will call an NPC chairman and say, oh, do you know I have social cultural groups in my house? We are meeting from the south. The man will say, oh, okay, sir, okay, sir. Um, uh, okay, come, uh, Bolaji, advance them 20 million from there, please. Uh, yes, sir, take it to us, expenses. These people will come to the house of um, Edwin Clark. They share them 33 million uh, head of coach, social cultural groups and they go back. And the zoo is as bad as ever. And these people, they claim they love us, they are our leaders, they are our elders, and things are getting worse every blessed day. And they do nothing. All they do is, to, is and even before they issue their statement, they will say, Oh, uh, please, Abuja, I'm going to write something. Oh, don't mind me. Let us just say it. Our people are very restive. They are worrying. Please, let us just do something. Let us just make a statement. The last opportunity to, constructi to constructively engage you and the Fulani nation is this letter. This is the last time, this Odua group is telling, this is the last time we are going to write to you in a civil manner. Because the problem is getting out of hand. We, now here comes their name, on behalf of Akpapo Odua Koya which is A-O-K-O-Y-A for short, the acronym, a coalition of several Ishekiri, Edo, and Yoruba groups write with our deepest feelings about the Nigerian state and what appears to be the pitfalls that lie ahead, most of which are oiled and orchestrated by your own people, the Fulani, albeit consciously, in other words, as the parliamentarian said in the UK, Fulani know what they're doing. They are the ones pushing terrorism. They are the ones advancing fulanization. They are the ones conquering you. As I said, I want you to ask any of your billion friends in Plateau State. Ask them. You are, you claim you are from Burum. You believe in one Nigeria. One Nigeria. This thing you're doing, but in your village, in your local government, you cannot even be an ordinary local government chairman. This ties into what I said before. The more you support Nigeria, the more you put your race at risk. That is why anybody talking about one Nigeria from anywhere, that person is an enemy of his or her people. Because one Nigeria means this thing that Britain put together. And this nonsense Britain put together, they gave the powers to the Fulani. Power may come to your village for four years, after that will go back to the north. And it would, uh, within that a space of two years, they will destroy everything you have done. Look at a country that people that in the past had a... Uh, to go and build one mega refinery in Lagos. And people are people watch these things every blessed day and they're moving about claiming that they're reasonable, that they're intellectuals, that they're well-read, that they're learned. And I'm saying, no, you're not. You're a glorified baboon. You know nothing. Your brains are empty. How can you claim you're intelligent? And four refineries that could employ an upward of 10,000 people is shut down. And you import petrol. You know, only that will let, will, will let anybody who has brain in their skull to understand that these are not human beings. So the petrol you're importing from abroad, where did they refine it? In a refinery. The same refinery that you have. And to make matters worse, you're paying subsidy. You're paying subsidy. The money you claim you don't have, you're paying subsidy for imported petrol. I don't understand it. The same petrol is coming from a refinery abroad. The same refinery that you have in Igwaj, the same you have in Hone, the same you have in Wari, the same in Kaduna. Why, therefore, I now let us assume that those people you are refining in their countries that they decide to be like you and shut down all the refineries in their countries. Will you have any refinery? Where will, where will you get your petrol from? Where will you get your petrol from? I ask you. Let me go back to this letter. In the past, 
There was no history of Fulani in today's territory until 1804. There was no Fulani in Nigeria. No, 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 I won't call it now. I'm calling Hausa territory. They only came in 1804. This was 800 years after the Yoruba kingdoms had been established, about 600 years after the Hausa uh, monarchies, the Ejo, uh, the Thief, the Gala, the Jukun kingdoms had flourished. The Igbo nation had existed for centuries before. We have existed for thousands of years, not centuries. Thousands of years. We are the oldest people on the face of this earth. Thousands of years. I didn't say, I said thousands upon thousands of years. If you go to the pyramid we built in the city, that tells you all you need to know. We built pyramids. Before even the first vulture that heralded the coming of the full and it landed on the Futajalon mountains. Before the, 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 the first vulture that brought full and forth, before Udele, before the first vulture was hatched from its egg, we've been existing as a people. They were ancient people. And I thank this people for reminding everybody of that. We recall that your forefathers came to power through brutal and bloody conquest of indigenous peoples in many parts of northern Nigeria under the guise of Islam. That's how they come. We are fighting corruption. We are fighting uh, we are fighting for Allah, for Islam, and they conquered all of you all the way to Nupe, all the way to Kwara State. Are you following? This, uh, because in life, anybody who went to a proper school will tell you one of the first things you learn as an undergraduate, even when you do an elective course, is this. They will tell you that history has a knack of repeating itself. History has a habit of repeating itself. That is why we must be vigilant. The Fulanese have done this in the past and they've succeeded. They conquered the Hausa and the Hausa foolishly, foolishly, foolishly helped them to conquer the Bagi. The Bagi foolishly helped them to conquer the Nupe. And everywhere is a Fulani conquest all the way to Jukun people. And all of you are there. You never learned anything from history. You never learned anything. You claim you have professors. There is no village right now that won't boast of having one professor. What does those your professors tell you? Do they educate you? Do they enlighten you at all? Do they actually tell you what life is all about? Has anyone actually sat down? I want to ask those propagating one Nigeria. Have you actually sat down to read full and history? In fact, that's an assignment this evening. Anybody again who argues with you about one Nigeria or the need to preserve Nigeria or to make it one, no matter who the fool is, just ask the idiot. Please, 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 I beg of you, go and study Fulani history. And after studying Fulani history, you then come back to me and let's have a debate about one Nigeria. You, you will see that they will repent overnight. You will see that what Fulani are doing today is a consistent pattern of conquest. That's what they have done from day one. They came into the place called Zoo in 1804. They deceived the Hausa people. The same way that they're saving some of you today. Every time, four years time, voting somebody who is good. We are looking every four years. And as you're focusing on every four years, they're encroaching, they're advancing. Using terrorism, using the Nigerian army, using the Nigerian police, who are now admittedly working for Miyeti Yala. Encroaching and encroaching and encroaching until what happened to Biram people will not happen to you. That in Biram land, there is no local government where you have a Biram person. They are finished. Is it what you want to see happen to your people? I ask you. That is why everywhere people are rising. And very soon, of course, middle belt will rise. You will see it. Just watch and see. Because if you don't rise up, they will swallow you up. The house that people failed to rise up. I will continue. We recall that your fair bears came. The Fulanis came through brutal and bloody conquest of indigenous people. They took over everywhere. They spread their Islam even to Yoruba land. Hausa land like Katsina, like Kanu, was swept to, do, to one side. As I have written yesterday, even Kanem Brono Empire collapsed. Constant pressure from the Fulani. The Shoho of Rano kept resisting. They, they kept fighting until they withdrew them down. They couldn't defeat them. That was why they stopped Boko Haram. Why do you think Boko Haram is in Brono? Some of you don't know anything. Why do you think Boko Haram, their epicenter, the epicenter of their struggle is in Brono State? Where they want to set up a caliphate. Because they tried and tried and tried for centuries. Brono said no. We are not going to follow the Fulani pattern. But Fulani still succeeded in penetrating and having their enemies. But of course, you still have the Shehu of Bron. Do you know that? Do you know that is why they went there? Do you know that the Fulani conquered everybody in the, in the north and went to, to Bron? Bron said no. 
they will be sleeping at night and the Sheikh of Rono and his armies will go and kill all of them. Are you aware of that history? Some of you don't know the fallen. That is why when I see a fool, when I see a compound illiterate mouthing their rubbish, one Nigeria, they don't know they are digging their graves, or should I say the graves of their own people? Because one day they will come and they will take your land over. And I thank this Yoruba group for pointing this thing, this this very issue out. So your sultan, they, they are now telling the sultan, so sultan, your visit to Nigeria in 1804 of your people have been very, very successful. You people are very lucky. Even when Britain came, they, they took you, they adopted you as their favorite slave and gave you all the powers that you needed. And people claim, what, what, I, what I find astonishing, are you telling me that this history now being enumerated by a, a papo, Odua, Koya, are you telling me it's not been there? These things are in your library. If you go to your libraries, they are there. If you go to the internet, they are there. You will know how they came about. You will know how the Fulanese came. A country of over 300 ethnic groups was handed over to you, a foreigner. I love these people. If they can keep up this temple. Yoruba are now waking up. They are now writing. Yoruba is saying that people who are indigenous to the land when you came was handed over to you very cheaply. First, through conquest, and some of it's uh, part by you who never owned an inch of land. Do you know that the foreign, they're not telling you we want through that? We want, we, we graze our cattle in the forest. We do our business in the bushes. Me, I like telling you. And some of you, even the media, the, the useless journalist will be there writing. Hey, they do their business in the bush. Yeah. Let me ask Fulani, you want pathway to come into my forest to come and graze your cattle? Did you bring land when you were coming from Futajalan? Where is your land? Did you ever own land before? You're a nomad. You don't own land anywhere. You are a wandering tribe of beasts. Where on earth have you owned land before? What is the problem in Mali? Some of you don't know the problem in Mali is, is Fulani. You say you don't know? <laughs> you heard about Mali. Hey, Jonathan is going to do peace. And, do you know that Fulani is the problem? Are you aware of that? Are you aware? The thing is that they will never stay in one place. They always want other people's properties. I don't understand the reason why. And they never work for it. The British in 1960, according to this very letter, the British in 1960 left, no, sorry, the British left in 1960 and you emerged as the main benefactor. Even though your people were not known to have fought for independence, which Fulani man fought for independence? That's nobody. Did the Fulani people fight the British? No. They welcomed them. But they emerged as the highest benefactors, or should I say the main one. You were wise enough to plant your people in security. They were very clever. Britain told them that the power lay in the gun. Whoever controlled the gun, whoever pulls the trigger controls power. So they made sure that their children were in the army. Courtesy of Britain. That was British advice. And they took it. And they went into the army. Very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. Now, what they have done is the, this letter said it is a reflection of your preference for force they want to use force police force even police now listen listen to this very carefully that is why i keep saying i don't know how else to speak to to to, to nigger animals and they will understand where did you get your independence from from who from britain which means that you were everything you had upon independence was a mirror image of British life is that correct? British laws, British schooling, uh, education system, British um, um, healthcare system, everything was British. Is that correct? In Britain, do you have police force? In Britain, is there any IG of police for the whole of England? People don't understand this very fact. Even in the United Kingdom, there is no centralized police system. Yorkshire have their own police. Essex have their own police. Central London have their own police called the Metropolitan Police. Everybody, if you go to Kent, Kent has its own police. If you go to, um, to, to Merseyside, Merseyside, which is Liverpool, they have their own police. If you go to, to, to everywhere, even in Scotland, the constable, they are all independent. Do you know why the police is independent? and localized so there will be nobody can get into power and want to overrun everybody by force of arms now you copied britain how why did you put the word force in your police in in, in britain does the police carry guns in, in britain they don't carry guns in britain i'm asking you is there lawlessness in britain are people going about blowing people up and killing people is there any accidental discharge Pe because black people don't reason Britain, their police is ordinary, it's called a constabulary. Your own is Nigeria police force, force. 
A police that is supposed to be serving the people is a force. If you do, I will shoot you by force and you will die. That's why you have an idiot in a, in, in a local state. They, they claim they are planning to arrest IPOB officers. Go and arrest now. Let's see. Go on now. Go and arrest. <laughs> what will happen before will happen again? I remember a joke that somebody told me in a, in a bus once. I was traveling from Iguacha with my wife to Lagos. We were going by road. And the man came on the bus and said, it's giving us a joke. And the man was saying, there was a man that stopped a vehicle that was traveling and said, if I'm looking for my wallet. If I don't find this, my wallet, what happened in 1972 will happen again. And people kept wondering and wondering and saying, oh my God, what was this thing that this man did in 1972? Well, the people started begging, if you know you're holding his wallet, make sure you give it to him. Oh. And the driver was worried, everybody. And after a while, after, after about three or four hours, after this delay, everybody was panicking, this man is going to do something. They asked the man, what did you actually do in 1972 when your wallet went missing? The man said, I did nothing, I just went home. They nearly beat him to death. Yeah, we'll look at where we will come from. The under the false artificial creation called the zoo, your people, your robots are talking to the sultan, your people produce no oil, yet you appropriate and decide how the resources should be expended. And let me tell you why the Flanis have succeeded so far. It's because of the likes of Ohaneze and Pandev. You have this so-called sociocultural garbage. All these people that come out and they claim they represent your interests. All they do is that they represent their families. Because ask yourself this question. You, all of you, have been in existence for very many years. What have you... Let us look at Pandev, for instance. Pandev, what have you achieved for Niger Delta? Jonathan was in power for six years. What was his accomplishment in Niger Delta? Nothing. Are our people drinking... Clean water? No. Has Ogoniland been cleaned? No. Um, is there employment? Uh, uh, no. Is there any... In what way does government benefit ordinary people? <laughs> no, none. There's nothing. Now you understand that some of you... The thing about black people is that we don't want to confront the truth with hard facts. That is the difference between IPOB, what we are doing on Radio Biafra, and any other group of people. We tell you the truth. If you like, you get upset. If you like, you eat your own flesh. If you like, keep turning around like a replant on Eventually, you will come to the inescapable conclusion that we are right. We've done nothing for you. Who gave... Now, ask yourself this question. How was it possible that only 7 million can be messing all of you up? Police force, army, everything they are there with their AK 47. Why? Are they more intelligent than us? The answer is no. Because inside us, there are people who are compromised. They, I call them the modern day warrant chiefs. They give them some money and they sell their soul and their conscience. There is a new brigade. The go and vote brigade. You have your hope on the next election. Now, every election is an opportunity for you to have hope that things will be better. And you know it never gets better with the zoo. The letter is very long. I'm going to publish it after this very program. I'll put it on my wall so you can go through it. In fact, the invasion of Yoruba land by Fulani headsmen is there. People say, oh, why are people agitating? Why is IPOB collaborating with, um, with our Yoruba brethren? Why are we, why won't you? Our, our, all our lives are in danger. <laughs> we are dying. <laughs> Fulani want to encroach. They want to go past Quara State. They want to move all the way to the lagoon in Lagos <laughs> with their version of Islam. And you think it's Islam. Of course it's not Islam. This is, 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 is a Fulani political strategy. If you don't understand once they, inst they install their ma it's over for your village as they're trying as they're now doing in 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 every state david Omar, he went and took money from the islamic bank it is uh, people don't, don't know that we know all these things you build a market you build two flyovers you tie one road it's on the internet so like, uh, yes but meanwhile one quarter of a brain state has been taken over by fulani janja weed they're in our forest they are killing our daughters. It is there in broad daylight. They think we are foolish. They think we don't know anything. That's what they think. That is why they can rise up and say, oh, we are not going to sit at home. People should walk about. But during COVID-19, you were sitting at home. You did not think of family then. We were the ones that sent palliatives to. I sent palliatives to a state. 
You can see the Gobi people reason. They think that they don't know that I uh, we know the strategy of Fulani. Fulani will give money today for my and say to him, Oh, please uh, try and uh, build one flyover, build one market, do this and do that. After all, Samuel, Samuel would do this. Samuel would come in and build roads in, in a boy. In return for those loans, you allow me eighty ala access. They can settle anywhere in Ebony. Ebony was their target. To do to Ebony what they did to Benue State. To take over Ebony as an Islamic state, and we said no to it. Till tomorrow morning. We are saying no, and they know it now. They know. Very, very well. That is what they want to do. That is as long as you remain, as long as you remain in one Nigeria, the pressure from the Fulani will always be there to take you over. If you don't know, let me tell you. And, uh, Zeke never saw that, but Mazen Bono Jike did. And warned Zeke, Zeke who don't listen. You know, if they don't, it's like oh, something is blocking their, their, their ears. They don't listen, they don't reason very well. Like, if you meet an Eflif, all he wants to do or all she wants to do is to contest election. He's our turn to eat money and you're telling me about freedom they don't want to hear. All they want to do is to eat money. Look at how brave this Yoruba group is writing to the Sultan, telling the Sultan all their sins, the sins of the full army. And you're there shouting about Nigeria. They want to spoil Nigeria for us. Go to your village and see what they're doing to it. I feel sorry for those in the middle belt. Now they have woken up, but it is a bit, uh, uh, they say better late than never. Then they must hurry up. Middle Belt must hurry up. Baggy must hurry up. Even Hausa must hurry up. Every, you must save yourself. You must save, forget all this garbage, Hausa Fulani. It's not like Hausa Fulani. You must save yourself. Fulani is killing people everywhere. This letter is very lengthy. Very lengthy. It was signed by Colonel Abimbola Shomumi, retired. Hey, Colonel, if you say, hey, oh, I'm an elite. I, I served in the army. I don't want my name to be heard. His name is Colonel Abimbola Shomumi, retired. Malam Salou Ahmed Akorede. People are coming out to speak. We started before them. Our own is, oh, you know, we have fought before. We can't fight again. You know how it is. Yeah, you, need to, you need to plan very well. Plan for how many years, I ask you. All they wanted to do, allow us to contest. Anybody who is contesting election becomes an enemy of freedom. Because all they want to do is to contest and to get into power. Once they're into power, it's their turn to eat for eight years. You have to wait for eight years. Another idiot comes up, it's my turn to contest. Do you see the chain? And it keeps going. And for some of you who don't understand that Middle Belt has been conquered, I'm going to play something for you. So you understand that they have been conquered. Unfortunately, I cannot post this for you now, but I'll do so immediately after this very program. You are going to listen to a clip of what is happening in the Middle Belt. These are the same Middle Belt people in the army. They are in the police. They are the ones saying, oh, go and kill IPOB. Go and... But their villages are gone. And you know the funniest thing is that God is fighting for us. As you're coming and you're trying to, to kill us for your Fulani masters, your own villages are being taken over by the Fulani bandits. That is how foolish people are. That is why I have said, if you're from the Middle Belt and you're in the army, if you're from the west, Oduduwa, Yoruba land, and you're in the army or police, and you're from the east, you're in the army or in the police, that nonsense they're telling you, police commissioner, let us go and arrest IPAB. Let's go and shoot every agitator and every protester. You are giving away your village to them for free. You are a fool. You are doing exactly the same thing that Hausa peasants did. That was why Fulani people killed all their harbor kings and replaced them with emirs. Isn't it very funny? Something that happened in 1804, 1804, when Gobert fell, Sokoto, President de Sokoto, is what people that claim they went to universities are doing today. The same thing Hausa peasants did in 1804 is what some graduates are doing today. The same thing you are an Igbo man or Igbo woman or your Biafran, wherever you are, they bring people fighting for your freedom to court. And you want to jail them. You want to adjourn the case. As a magistrate, you don't come to court. As a judge, you don't come to court. You want them to suffer. You want to demoralize us, to abandon our struggle. Your behavior is exactly the same behavior of a Hausa peasant 200 years ago that led to the fall of Gobert and the renamed, renamed this Sokoto, the, the fall of Katsina. Today, they have the Emir of Katsina. Today, they have the Emir of Kano. Are you listening? Are some of you listening? 
some of you that claim you're in the army, you're in the police, you're saving one Nigeria. Do you know that, that fighting to save one Nigeria means you are giving up your village to Fulani to conquer? Are you aware of that? I want to play something for you. Because some of you are dumb, very, very dumb and foolish indeed. Uh, but I must wake you, it is our duty to wake you up. And we are doing so and doing so diligently. And we are not stopping. I want to let people in the middle belt understand. You are in the middle belt, you are in the army. We are going to shoot at them. We want to arrest them. We want to conquer them. We want to help our... You are helping Fulani conquer your village. Listen very carefully to this, please. Listen very, very carefully. Listen. In March, mm -hmm. 7 to 12, mm -hmm. 100 churches in Zaria city were burned down and over 300 Christian homes in and Zaria. businesses cars and a couple of people killed and destroyed yes middle I was the leader then of the Christian Association Zaria chapter mm -hmm. are you listening in 1987, 1987. in March mm -hmm. 7 to 12 mm -hmm. 100 churches yes. in Zaria city mm -hmm. were burned down and over 300 Christian homes and businesses cars and a couple of people killed and destroyed in Zaria I was the leader then of the Christian Association Zaria chapter yes and the Lord asked me to tell the people to do nothing yes I and I wrote that letter it was circulated and the Christians watched as their businesses were being destroyed homes destroyed. killed this by Fulani in 2010, I was in Joss as in bishop. Joss. Same little belt. To the date, 7 to the 12th of March, three villages in the near outskirts of Joss. Mm -hmm. Muslims massacred men, women, and children. Are you listening? And the church <laughs> leaders, we were all convinced to beg the villagers and those that survived and the entire Christian community to do nothing. Yes, Christians do nothing. As they Jesus cried said. until their voices were dry, dried up, tears dried up, and there was nothing more to cry, mm -hmm. and they just watched. Mm -hmm. In 2006, over 40 people came to my house to kill me. <laughs> the full army. It turned out I postponed my return home, and they met my wife. They did unspeakable things to her. The her wife. left her half dead and totally black. Are you listening? You are from the middle belt. <laughs> one Nigeria. One Nigeria. He was a one Nigeria, no? He was in Zaria. They killed Christians. They killed what they mean by Christians is that they killed the local populations. People who actually own the land. In that Zaria, they have the Emma of Zaria. Who is a visitor? He ran to Joss. They met him in Joss. He escaped, but they got his wife and they raped his wife. He's a very brave man. I'm going to give away this video to our people that do live videos just so they can analyze it. <laughs> Are you following what we're saying? Are you listening? You see, I, I keep saying, as I said before, when I went to university in England, the first, one of the first things that I had in mind was to, as I, as I told my father before I went to England, is to understand how Britain brought this problem to us. And of course, to study and to research this, the level of stupidity in the brain of a black man. People wonder why I speak the way I do, why I curse and I insult black people. Because if I don't curse and insult black people, that area of your brain that harbors stupidity will continue to grow. So we need to diminish it. This is Nigeria for you. The man is giving you dates from years back, his own personal experience. The wife was raped in front of, defiled by Fulani Janjaweed. In the same country, they ask you, oh, come on, oh, please go and vote. Vote in 2023, vote in 2099, vote in 2098. People are foolish. The same people, Christians from the Middle Belt, Southern Kaduna in Jos, Biram, as I, as I said to you, you are in the army. You are in the police. You are helping Fulani to extend their rule to your village by doing what is wrong before God and before man. Let us listen to this very man because it is, it is absolutely astonishing. Astonishing what people go through in the zoo and they keep quiet. But I'm very glad that the Yorubas have risen and this very 
crop. I'm telling you, these people they are now hardcore. Serious. They want Oduduwa freedom. All they care about now is Oduduwa freedom. And until middle belt rise up, they are finished. Let us listen. Until their voices were dry, dried up. Listen. Tears dried up and there was nothing more to cry. Yes. And they just watched. Yes. In 2006, over 40 people came to my house to kill me. Mm hmm <laughs> It turned out I postponed my return home. Yes. And they met my wife. Yes. They did unspeakable things to her. They did unspeakable things to her. Beat her, left her half dead and left. totally blind. They raped her to the point that she became blind. Have you ever seen a woman raped to the point where she became blind? This man is telling you not what happened to somebody else, what happened to the wife, what Fulani did to the wife. This same Fulani, some idiots, some fools, some, some, hey. I think it's about time when somebody says, say something about Nigeria. You put your fingers in the idiot's eyes. They are foolish. This is what happens to you when you allow the Fulani to come in. Your wife will be raped to the point that she will become blind. These are people that sleep with their cows. They sleep with cows and they come and they rape your wife into blindness until your wife goes blind. Then you understand you're in a zoo, in a zoological republic, courtesy of Britain. And Britain cannot see any of these things. They see no evil and they hear no evil. And evil is happening, and you want men of good conscience to keep quiet. You want us to not not to speak, not to talk, not to agitate for our freedom to be quiet until Fulani will sweep us. Oh my God! God will punish all of you, Fulefus, all of you. You know, Hanese and Pandev, all you idiots, all you fools, you fools, taking money from Fulani, taking money and making our lives a misery. Useless people. Listen. Through the mercy of God, she recovered. Six months later in the USA, she came back. Exactly one year later, they came back again. This time they met me at home. Over 30 people came, broke down the house. They had their time. Broke down the back door, came in, and took me out to kill me. Are you listening? They later on changed their minds and said they would kill me in my bedroom. I pleaded with them to pray and they allowed me to pray yes as i prostrated before the lord about two minutes later my wife was holding my hands five minutes later my son came in and i said what are you doing here and he said daddy they've gone what chased them away what they saw what they didn't see only eternity will reveal are you listening? now friends i'm not saying this to play down on those who have died, I've lost a classmate who was a pastor in Kaduna. He was roasted in his church. Roasted in his church I've in Kaduna. I've lost colleagues, Kaduna. schoolmates, and brothers and sisters who've been slaughtered for the faith. Yes. Why I'm alive, I don't know. But one thing I know, until my time is up, and I know I will die someday, blood crash, air crash, car crash, whatever crash, until that day, I have a gospel to proclaim. I have a gospel worth living for. And I have a gospel worth dying for. Amen. He has finished. He survived it. His friends did not. The wife suffered rape until she became blind. That is the Nigeria that some idiots are conversing for to be continued. I don't understand it. Some of you don't learn. People from the middle belt, they tell the new woman is your problem, Biafra is your problem, go and fight them, go and kill them. They came to our land and they killed over 5 million people. Today, are they not being killed by the same people? Today, I don't know, are they not in the forests of Yoruba land? Are they not in their forests killing them? Those that said, oh, we are Niger Delta, we are South South, have you been spared? Are you not being killed? Do you see? Where we came, why Chukwu Kikabiyama determined that we should come. Now this man is from the middle belt, the same middle belt that Go On comes from. Somebody said his name is um, I don't know what his name is. This Jonah Jang. He said that the problem started the problem in the zoo. The full problem started after Go On was overthrown. 
I don't know how grown up men in the zoo, Nigeria, especially some of them you call your elders, how they can be so deceptive. They are liars, selective in what they wish to recall, and they come and they, they, they spew out outright lies. Look at this very man telling us that a problem started. It was Gowan not the problem? Gowan was a Christian. Gowan was fighting for one Nigeria. I want to let a flavor look at if you want to see how sad your lives are, look at Gowan. Gowan was a head of state. He was a Christian. They brought him out. He thought he was fighting for one Nigeria. But today go to his village, go to his state. What is happening to him? They they got um what's his name? Um Tiwa Danjuan. He was fighting for one Nigeria. He was going to kill you. He was killing Igbo people. He killed Ironsi. He was fighting to kill everybody. He was he was he was he was, he, he, he was so deadly during the war. Because they told him the problem you have is Biafra is an evil man. Go and kill him. He went. Today, the same man is lamenting because they never learned anything from history. That is how Fulani operate. Today, they have gone to police um, stations and to army barracks to tell them, hey, IPOB is the problem. Nam the Khan is the problem. Go and kill him. Go and kill every IPOB officer. But these are idiots from the middle belt. These are officers in the army and police from the middle belt. In their own villages, Fulanis have taken over. And the same Fulani is telling you to go and kill IPOB, kill Nam the Khan, kill everybody. And you doing it you uh, can you see how foolish you are all of you even those working in the courts in the in our land do you see how foolish you are so you don't know by detaining somebody who is agitating for your freedom you are helping the fallen need to advance into your village and take it over look at just what is happening in the middle belt you had a living testimony how Nigeria's problem started with the queue, with the coup that overthrew uh, 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 go on, John Ajan, people talking. These are the so called elders. People lying. He never knew that go on should have insisted on the implementation of Aburi. Aburi is the same restructuring that claiming for today, you know. The same restructuring. Every idiot now is let's restructure, let's have a dialogue. All that rubbish. Imagine 193 million people begging seven million people to have a dialogue have you seen anything more stupid in your life before 193 million people begging seven million people please can we have a dialogue i have never seen such idiocy only in africa that was why only five thousand europeans conquered the whole of africa we are foolish to the to, to the bon marrow John Ajang, a former Plateau state governor, the same Plateau that is being ravaged today. They were the ones that fought the war against Biafra. They knew that Ojuku went to Aburi to negotiate for restructuring, for regionalization. The same thing that you have in England. But England said, UK said no. I don't understand it. The same thing. Gowon came back and was overthrown. Now he's saying that this was the overthrow of our government when they were being lied to. When the you know that's the thing about our people, very, very envious. People are very, very individualistic and selfish. Envious. And you Ojuku went to Aburi to negotiate the restore after 50 years. After 50 years, the same thing that Ojuku saw, the same thing that Ojuku fought for, is what they are now. Everybody is now clamoring and fighting for it. Now you understand, don't you? That we are always right. When we refuse to vote for Buhari, we are right. We knew him. The thing these days that I'm happy about is that our Yoruba brothers now understand that we are measured in our thinking. When we say no to something, that thing that is evil in it, now they are going to use Tinubu to try to deceive them once again. They will bring out Tinubu. They will be talking, but as I said, I trust this very set. It's not like the ones who have gone before. These are young, vibrant men and women. You know, Dudua movement. And they are not going back anymore. That's what I love. And they have hoisted their flag. In Yaba, did anybody shoot at them? Did the Lagos state governor come out as Umahi will foolishly do, idiots? Uh, uh, they, no sit at home here. There should be no sit at people. Have, I am asking Umahi, have you seen a Yurisha and Lagos state? Ha, do you know that the Yoruba Odudua flag was flying in Yaba? Did someone look come out to say, oh, Who are those? Arrest them. Uh, my friend is the commandant of a joke and torment. Go and shoot them. 
If he's a stupid, hopeless Igbo governor, useless to the bone, you hopeless, you can shoot them because you're trying to please your full master so they can give you presidency. But they're not going anywhere. Let them come and campaign now for presidency. Let's see. That time they will know how angry we are. They think they are smart. Look, we, people are angry. In a police state, Fulani hates men are slaughtering people. I want some people to Google it tonight and post it. Those listening on my page on Facebook, go and Google it and post the link. Dave Umahi opened his mouth and said, They are raping our mothers and killing them in a police state. It is there. It was carried by Punch newspaper. Go and look for it. We said, we are fed up of Fulani killing us in a Boeing state. The same government came out and said, oh, there should be no seat at home. There is no problem here. Because he wants to contest for presidency. Because of your presidency, our mothers should be killed and raped in the farm. Because of the money you took from his Islamic bank to build one or two flyovers. You think because of that? Because of that rubbish, we then sacrifice our lives. The same idiotic move made by a full army peasant. And today, Gobert is named Sokoto. He's gone. You think you're smart? They know nothing. These people, they know nothing. These people are lying. You see that said, the said we are elders. They are liars and deceivers. They are liars and deceivers. Somebody should go and ask, go on. Who is responsible for the mess now happening in the zoo? Is it not you? Go on. Nobody, you have journalists, like, oh, the seasoned journalists, seasoned journalists emeritus, and I'm asking them, why have you not been to go on to go and ask go on? Why did you not honor Aburi Accord? Why don't you ask all of them agitating today for one national dialogue or the other or for constitutional review? Ask them, what happened when Ojuku went to Aburi? That you came and you were lying that Ojuku succeeded. Liars and deceivers liars and now their shame has caught up with them they no longer know how to hide their shame anymore they are now looking for excuses the same middle belt has been ravaged where people are, are being killed in southern kaduna they are being slaughtered in the same southern kaduna they have their sons and their daughters in the army fighting those who are fighting for their freedom how foolish can black people be i ask the same thing goes for those who are working in the courts in biafra land you want to jail somebody who is fighting for you the person, the problem of Nigeria today is go on. Go on is the problem. He may say that the British forced him. Go on is the, he was the head of, go on is the problem of Nigeria. That is why he, I said, I'm, I'm praying. I am praying every day. And he knows that God is no longer listening to his prayers because he comes from Plateau State. In Benue Plateau is now the epicenter of Fulani banditry and terrorism as punishment because if you touch the anointed of God, God will always pay you back. All the terrorism ravaging the north is as a result of what they did in Ireland. And if I say to them, the reason why all these Fulani terror groups are now killing the army and the police in the north is because of Operation Pattern Dance, they won't believe it. But that is the reason why. They will kill all of them and they'll keep killing them. And today, Plateau, people of Birom today, there is no Birom man or woman who can claim to be a local government chairman. It's because of Go On. Go On is the problem. Go On went to Ghana, discussed with Ojuku how things are going to be. He came back and he reneged. And he had the temerity to come out and say that Ojuku succeeded. And those, let me, let me, let me catch a journalist again, write that nonsense that Ojuku went to war. Well, Biafra succeeded. Let me, I'm just waiting to, to read from one idiot. Then I'll disgrace the fool. Idiots everywhere in this. That's why I call them zoo animals. They claim them they went to school. And I have said they should knock down, they should do those every university in the zoo. It is useless. What they train are idiots. As you're coming out of the zoo as a graduate and you go and do that, you're useless NYSC. You become a very foolish idiot for the, an animal for the rest of your life because you can no longer reason. 193 million people. Have you heard of such do the mathematics? 193 million people begging 7 million people to please help us make our lives uh, more terrible in front of your eyes before your two naked eyes before your two naked eyes they shut down four refineries and gave their own person another full animal license to go and build a refinery in your own eyes every day you wake up and you talk about one nigeria are you not foolish are you not hopeless are you not idiotic Go on was the man who sabotaged that bullying, and as such is the man responsible today for all the woes happening in this zoological republic that Britain created. 
the British imperialistic tendencies that scuttled the beautiful Abdullah Accord is the reason why all of you are in a mess. Is the reason why you are dying in the middle of belt. Is the reason why there are foreigners camped in your villages right now. Is the reason for the rise of Mieti Allah. Go on is the one responsible for it. And everybody fell hook, line, and sinker for the British BBC propaganda against Biafra and Dojuku. All of you fell for it. The same way that they are carrying their propaganda against me and IPOB, but only this time that we are formidable. If you give us one, we give you hundred. That is why they are afraid of us. Bring it on. I don't care who you are. If you are IBC, and let them do any document about us and your boy and your hand and they know who we are even facebook has gone on to close our one point a community of 1.5 million people it doesn't matter how they conspire now we have our own platform now as i'm speaking the whole world is listening to me they can no longer stifle us they can no longer cage us they can no longer censor what we say or what we are thinking now the field is level and they will get it. They will get it. People are now waking up to the reality that that full on it demonic plans for all of you ignorant fools shouting one Nigeria is very obvious. He wants you shout one Nigeria, you are an, you are a complete no, you are a complete bastard. You are a, you are a, you are an animal. I'm telling you the truth. Full on it is making use of your brain, and you cannot see it. And you claim you went to school, you claim you are educated, but of course you're not. People moving cattle from place to look at Nietiala, Ogani Nietiala can go to Asorok. And they gave them 100 billion in front of all of you. All of you saw it. They, they didn't hide it. A terrorist group was given 100 million before all of you animals in the zoo. 193 million people, begging 7 million people that came as visitors in your own land. <laughs> black people. I have told God in my next life, I don't want to see blacks. I'm telling you, we are useless to the, to the bottom line. We are useless. 193 million people begging 7 million people. Every day we are begging. They kill us in Southern Cardinal, we cry. They kill us in Zaria, we cry. They come to Agatha, they kill us, we cry. They go to the forest in Yoruba land, they kill Papa Shurante's daughter, we cry. Well, that is all we do. That is all. And out of all of this nonsense, an idiot will come up and be talking about one Nigeria. Is even now, in, even a House of Reps member, I, 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 oh God in heaven, put me out of this misery and this UG black. Black people, they drive me mad. Black people, the way they reason, they drive me insane. Why did God, why did you create black people? Why, how can you create people who cannot reason? I don't understand it. Water bill is a northern agenda to tighten the news on the south. A house of a, a, a listen, somebody who went into the house of reps and took an oath to be loyal to Nigeria. A member of the house of representatives representing Uweli North and the south and Udu federal constituency in the house of Honorable Francis Waive has described the water resources bill, the full army water resources bill as a northern agenda, which is when they say northern, it means full army. Forget all that northern crap. After all, it is the same north that they are killing people in, in, in Kaduna. The same north oh, they are killing Christians in, in, in Zaria. These are Hausa Christians. In the same north, in Birom, they are killing people in, in Plateau, killing city people, killing everybody. They are killing your north. Not an agenda. It is a full army agenda. It's a northern agenda to tighten the news on the south. And you have somebody from the same south, you can see clearly the intentions of the full army to take over your lives. You can see them coming with their AK for them and their bombs. And you're there shouting, waving your flag, one Nigeria. Well, as you Dave Omar is doing, they, they, he, he thinks they'll give him presidency. He's a madman, of course. They, he, he knows he cannot get it. Can you see it? Can you now? This is what they do. They convince you to be against yourselves. And I have asked every go and ask. Okay, Zibaz, all these murderers that you have uh, answering governors. Obiano. These are people that killed their own fellow brothers and sisters fighting for their freedom. Let me ask you, have you not heard of Oduduwa freedom and, and agitation? Have you not heard about it? Did you not see the flag all over the place? Yoruba flag? Has anyone killed them or burnt the flags is only you idiots only you fools the fools every blessed day uh, the FRD is, IPOB did you this IPOB did can you now understand it and but let me tell you there's something people haven't noticed as well look at Sahara reporters look at all the Yoruba papers the punch newspaper all of them reporting Oduduwa agitation 
Has any of them called them secessionists? <laughs> no. But if it is an able journalist now, once he writes or be a friend journalist and submit his his Yoruba editor will tell him, come on, go and change that, put secessionist there. But now their own people are agitating to be free. Nobody's calling them secessionists. I want our people to put on their thinking caps. I want them to become reasonable. I want the governors of the East to look at what their counterparts are doing in the West and learn from it. Have you seen it? Now, if any of them comes out now to contest for presidency, they can support the person. But you, after killing IPOB family members, conniving to bring Operation Python dance, then you want to come and campaign so we can vote for you to become president. When you were governor, you killed us. When you're president, now, you, you drop bomb from you. You tell the Air Force, go and bomb our villages now. You think we are not sensible? <laughs> Come and campaign, Kachileke Bunoko. None of you, none of you. But of course, Biafra will come before that. None of you, none of you will smell that place. Your wickedness, your wickedness. All of you, with all these ideas, we want to fight for Igbo president. You, you are, you are in cloud cuckoo land. We are waiting for you to bring out your campaign vehicle on the streets of Biafra and Kachileke Bunoko. Then you know how angry we are. If you want to be, if you want to be president. Join us and fight for Biafra. When Biafra comes, you contest to be the Biafra president. It will be the most prestigious office in Africa. Hey, hey, fools, you think we are foolish? Come and campaign now. Uh, 2019 was the last time we played that game. It's not going to happen again. An honorable member, a federal uh, um, constituent. What is it called again? Is it federal house of um, reps or whatever they call the rubbish? He's telling you that the Fulanis are coming for you. Yet you are there in, in saying, I am a Delta, I'm part of Niger Delta of Nigeria. You can see that they're coming for you. According, not me, not Nam the Kano, not IPOB, not anything we're saying. A, a, the person you sent to the federal house to represent you, he has been to Abuja, he has seen what is about to come and is warning you. And you're there in your tiny hut in the, in the creek, in the, drinking polluted water, shouting in Niger Delta <laughs> of beer of Nigeria. Stupidity is a disease, a very big disease. The time now is approximately 25 minutes to the top of the hour. We are live and we are direct and we're bringing the gospel of heaven. The gospel of heaven. Gospel of heaven. Aziki is in this grave today. He never knew that one Nigeria would be like this. If they said to Azikiwe, there will be a time when a federal house member in Abuja or the capital, anywhere it is, he will be telling our people that they are coming to enslave us. We won't believe it. He won't believe it. But he was there, Zeke, was doing Zeke of Africa, Zeke of Nigeria, one Nigeria, one Nigeria. But now, look, hear what a, a politician is telling you, that they are coming for you. They're bringing Ruga, bringing everything, arming Miyet Yala, using the police and the army to, ad, to advance full army terrorism into your homes and villages. They have bribed Facebook. They have bribed everybody. They have bribed everybody bribable. To suppress the truth. Because of course, from Bill Gates' perspective, <laughs> any death in, in, in Nigeria is a is a plus for the world because they're 200 million. So the in fact, I even believe that the ones encouraging funny terrorism. So to keep the numbers down. I'm being honest with you. Not minding the overwhelming evidence of felony domination and patent Islamization. Some Yoruba people have not learned from the experience of their loss of a lorring to the Fulani. Some so-called Yoruba are against the Duda Republic. I'm talking about those who are against the Duda Republic. But one good thing is that no Yoruba governor has ever mobilized the Fulani army to kill their people. Unlike the duos you have in Biafra. These are the ones going to contest for presidency now. After you killed us as a governor, imagine what you're going to do to us when you become a president. <laughs> you will come and behead all of us now. You will send the Fulani. You will want to prove to Fulani that you're a good Nigerian. So that means, and they will tell you, why don't you go and set an example with your own people? You will send them to come and behead all of us. Igbo <laughs> man, president of Nigeria. <laughs> Mad people everywhere. Oduduwa Republic, October 1 rally divides Yoruba leaders. They are divided. And in this very division that they have, in this very division that they have, these people claim they are educated. Some of them claim 
that they went to school. There is one called him, calling himself High Chief Lakan Balogun. I have not seen any Yoruba or Ba who support self determination. How can they support it when they are afraid they will be arrested if they do? Or uh, Olu Olu Badon was the only only one at that Ibadan conference, and he was represented by his High Chief. And Lakan Balogun only pleaded for unity and peace among Yoruba. He did not preach self determination. The, the idiot saying this thing doesn't know that there are Yoruba people in Benin Republic, Yoruba people in Togo as well. He claims he loves Yoruba people, but he doesn't want to see all Yoruba people one united under one banner, under one nation. Do you? I, I don't know if it is the meat. There must be something wrong with any idiot that calls himself a Nigerian. I'm very sorry. It is not the High Chief Lakan uh, uh, Balogun. Please let me see the, the the monkey saying this type of rubbish. If I even put his name down. He didn't present. One is saying that uh, more harm will be done. He is a coward. He didn't even put his name down. We need to in involve everybody. He you are going to? In are you going to involve the same Oba who said he's now an M.A. in your land that the Fulanese gave money? He said he's now an M.A. Are you going to involve him as well? The likes of um, who puts them? <laughs> the the Supreme Court people call him governor. I don't want anybody calling him governor anymore. He is the Supreme Court administrator. He is the Supreme Court Fulani appointed administrator of Imo State. I don't want anywhere on any IPOB radio Biafra platform anybody referring to Hopos or them. Don't put the word governor before no. He is the Supreme Court Fulani appointed administrator of Imo State. He's a mouthful, I know, but that is the title of his job. Do you now understand? Do you now understand? I hope that you do. I hope that you do. They are divided, of course. And everywhere you go to, you have an Anifulif. An Anifulif. This one, it says his name is Senator Femi Okoromu. The agitation by Akintoyo led World Yoruba World Congress for Autonomous Federation is not the consensus of the Yorubas as a whole. But this idiot is there. As they killed Parfashorante's daughter, the idiot did nothing. Senator Femi Okoromu, whatever the, the fool's name is. He's there and the foreigners are in their forest. He's, he's doing nothing. His concern is that little money that the, the foreigners have promised him coming from Abuja. That's his concern, a black man. That's all. He, once they are okay with their families, everybody else can go to hell. They don't care. That is how they reason. That is who they are. That is how they behave. But now they can see everywhere you go to you have your own fair share this um, somebody should remind that fool that um uh, middle belt people were saying the same thing before <laughs> when go on was there they were dancing and basking in the euphoria we were against biafra we defeated biafra today they wake up and they see eight nine twenty janja weed on top of their wives and by the end of the process the woman will be blind <laughs> now you understand I don't, please, that is why I don't feel sorry for any if we know for 60 years on the edge. 60 years and the zoo is going nowhere. According to Dan Juma, Dogon Yaro, Lekwot and others. And they are all from the middle belt. Dan Juma, Dogon Yaro, Lekwot, others. All from the middle belt. They were the ones that fought Biafra. They were the ones that carried the propaganda. Hey, woman is your problem. They are the, they are the ones that said that Biafra must be destroyed. Today they are crying. Today they are shedding blood. Today blood is coming out of their eyes. I'm not happy about it. It's called come up and see. They are getting it today. Now they know Biafra wasn't the problem. Now they know that Ojuku was not the problem. They are their own. The same place that Danjuma comes from is where Goron comes from. Now the middle belt is paying the price the same way that the house of people paid the price for betraying their kings. Today the middle belt is doing the same thing. They are now crying, saying that things are no longer happening. What did I actually say? Least Biafra war, Sharia democracy, other matters to be investigated. Now they want Biafra war to be investigated. Now they understand that we did nothing wrong. Now they know that Ojuku did not. But these were the people that fought Ojuku. Now they are even using the same words that I use on Radio Biafra. Buhari's administration using colonial solutions to tackle problems. You know, it is very clear that the Fulanis are the ones colonizing you. Very, very clear. Very, very clear. This is why we say sit at home. It will take, it's, it's only an, that, is, that tells you how wicked and callous some of these governors are. Everybody is lamenting. Even people who are die in the war, Nigerians like Danjuma, they are lamenting. It's, when we said 
But Fulanis are killing us in our farms. Can't you see it? Let us tell the world we are not happy. An Igbo man will answer. There's no state at home in Ebony. Ebony is a is a Fulani state now, as a as the Fulani police um, commissioner said. Is is now is almost a Fulani state. Hey, they, can you imagine? And that day, some idiots will leave their homes to come out. When they don't, if you leave your home to come out on the first of October in a backlick or in a boy, the blood of all those people that the Fulani terrorists are killing in the farms are on your head. Omar, he said, come out, defy the sit at home because he wants to be vice president to a Fulani man. All the mining in Ebony is under Omahi's name with Chinese people. That's what he's doing. Some of you are blind. The same thing that the Fulanese did to Middlebet is what he's doing to all of you because you are blind. You are blind. You cannot see. When the result will come home, I will tell you, I told you so. As I, I, was, telling, as I was telling everybody before, when I told you people before that the Fulanese were coming, did you believe me? Did you believe me? I told you they will come. I said they are coming to enthrone bad governors. This thing they're saying to the I told you the Fulanis will come. Your life will be a misery. Has it not happened? Has it not happened before your eyes? The same thing will happen to you. People don't know Omahi will destroy all of you in Ebony. By the time you wake up, I swear to God in heaven, Ebony will become a Fulani caliphate. Then your eyes will clear. And you may mad people everywhere even now after so many years biafra war sharia democracy other matters to be investigated now their eye the eyes of everybody has opened 50 years after ujuku told them this what i'm fighting is a just cause they didn't want to hear ujuku kept saying what i'm fighting nobody wanted to listen yoruba did not want to listen middle bed said let's go and kill them even our own brothers everybody they bribed them they gave money to some people from a joland like edwin clark to become a traitor and he was a traitor they are today your leaders traitors of yesterday are today your leaders and you're telling me that you're human beings what type of god made you now, after demonizing Ojuku, after talking rubbish about Biafra, after over 50 years, typical black people, they have now realized their mistakes. They are now saying, oh, we are very sorry. Which they will say to IP. Was IP, remember when we started? There was no name under the sun that we were not called. Every name, miscreant. So are you telling me now that those people fighting for the Republic that they are miscreants? Are they thoughts? Are they seeking for recognition? Do they want money? Do they want fame? <laughs> I want to let people understand the depth of evil in the heart of an evil man. I want to ask them, have you seen those who are agitating now? As a result, of course, when I met the Ambazonians in America in those days, they told me, I asked them, how did you start? They said, we are listening to Radio Biafra. I'm being honest, go and ask them. It's for us to rise up to challenge the existing colonial imperialistic orthodoxy in Cameroon by listening to us on Radio Biafra. I'm being honest with you. Now in Western Togoland, in Ghana, they are fighting for freedom because they listen to Radio Biafra. People thought that the Yorubas can never wake up, that they will never rise up to fight. But now, <laughs> this breed i'm seeing now i'm even afraid of them they are determined determined to the core and as i said to them Timbu will try to use it to ride to asarok they said over there that it can never happen so there is no fear that tomorrow they will give it to Timbu and he will abandon no nah, no nah, nah. people can't abandon this is impossible that is to tell you, everything we tell you comes to pass. Everything I tell you comes to pass. And why would people defend something as horrible as Nigeria? Because of what I call the empire mentality from our creators, the British, who adopted, I, I can't understand, people that they put in power after independence adopted the, the rogue mentality of building an empire. They call themselves nationalists. Before the white man came, where the Yorubas at war, with Biafran people, the answer is no. Where we at war with Middle Belt, the answer is no. How come after they came and left? Because they built an empire. And there is something in the brain of black people. This is something that most people don't know. Black people, no matter how primitive we are, we love our freedom. 
And that is why in the next 50 years, you see Africa, you will recognize it again. People are going to break into pieces. If they like, they can come back together later on. But to tell me that a white man can come from somewhere and, and model people up together and give you a name and you answer it, in 50 years' time, Africa will not be recognizable. People will break away. I'm telling you, people will want to be on their own the way we were before the white man came. And what is wrong with that? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Those idiots that call themselves nationalists, they came and acquired the British Empire mentality. Let us expand. That was why Azikiwe said, no, 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 no. They leave, leave Nigeria the way it is. And I don't believe in breakup because he wants to be an emperor and an empire that he did not build. That is the truth and the fact of life. That is why, even as we preach this very gospel, in the Western, in the Western, they call it, is this, is this Western Togoland, they call it. Western Togoland. They said the Ghanaian police or the Ghanaian armed forces. That's where they are strong, armed forces. Ghana security forces say separatists killed in shootouts. That's what they do. That is that colonial mentality, that empire mentality. There was no Ghana before the British came. Everybody was on their own. People want to go back to the way they were before the white man came and you're busy shooting them because Nana Kofo Ado wants to be an emperor. Britain gave us Ghana. You know, I, 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 I don't understand this thing about black people. I am struggling. When the white man came and was conquering us, we were complaining, saying we don't like it, we want the white man to go. And as soon as the white man left, that, that, that edifice of, of racism, which is a nation state in Africa, we allowed it to stand. That very philosophical inconsistency, that inconsistency in terms of our approach to something we clearly identified as a problem initially, when the white man left, instead of the nationalists to say, to your tent, O Israel, let us plan from there, they said, no, 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 we want to, they even formed an army and police to police the boundary created by a white man. That is why I have no regard, no respect for them. People call them nationalists, I call them a bunch of idiots, they are nothing. Right across, you say they are nationalists, they, they fought rubbish, they fought for their pockets and their families. Those who fought for independence properly are those that allowed people to go back to how they were before the white man came. You're killing people in Western Togo. And I'm asking Kofi, Kofi Nana, the president of Ghana. Before the white man came, did your ancestors have anything called Ghana before? Or Gold Coast? But now the white man has left. You want to assume. Oh, people are very, very backwards. Very, very backwards very very backwards i'm telling you that is why i call african people fools they don't have any brain they cannot reason very well let us go back to how we were before the white man came then if i want to be in the same country with the white people i can go and negotiate with them i say oh, we have this and that in common we can benefit each other we debate it we vote on it we go to place beside we ask the people and they vote that's how it's done anybody you want to join you you go to them and they willingly join as scotland willingly joined the uk over 300 years ago and today they want to go and nobody's stopping them i don't know what's wrong with, with african people a white man came and built some junk called it nigeria which you, you don't even know the, the, the meaning of the name and you're jumping up and down i'm a nigerian i'm a nigerian let's defend nigeria and, I, and, I'm, and i'm wondering uh, what type of cage uh, the animal jumped out from and uh, possibly a university degree holder for that matter. Very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad, but we must preach the gospel of truth. We must preach this very gospel. So, Fulani will continue to wreak havoc on all of you. They will continue. That is why they said, uh, effort for peace sake. Saldana must become next president. We are not interested. This is, this is Aoud Wilbe. He's from the middle belt. He's in the middle belt, oh. I would do away in different. He, a southern should be. Is that? Did we say that is our problem? Do you think we are fools? Don't you think that we, we we can go and support somebody to become president so people can be made whatever thing that they want to be, given positions and slots, and they will make so much money. You don't know we can do that. That is not our cup of tea. If you like, spread your presidency like a confetti all over the place. That is when they will know who we are. We are not interested. If you like, come to my village and we after P2B and um, Atiku. That band has come and gone. That is the end of it. No more. No presidency, nothing.
Let your people know. Let us give it. Do you think we are foolish? The same way you use your so-called presidency or head of state, you gave it to go on a Christian from Middle Belt, and then you took over all of them and said we are all one north. And they agreed. And today, what is happening to them? The same thing you want to do to us. Hey, come and take the presidency. After that, then look. Jonathan was president for six years. What happened? Any improvement? Is there any improvement? A few people were enriched. That's all. Who tell me the tangible improvement for the woman in the creek drinking contaminated water? How did you improve her life and that of the children? How I ask? People are jumping. It's our turn. For a pity's sake, you are foolish. Some of you live abroad. When you live abroad, is it Donald Trump, your cousin? Is he from your village? It's the policies that matter how the country is structured, how it is run. It doesn't matter where somebody comes from. I'm asking you. Is, for some of you that live in the UK shouting, is the town of is, is man's town? Is Boris Johnson from your village? Is Boris Johnson from your village? I ask you. People talk as if they cannot reason very well. What we want is our freedom, and that freedom we are going to get. If you like, you can go and join the flan. They will deceive you. Say, it's, it's because of Nam the Kano and IPOB. That is why you cannot get the presidency. See what you can do. Some of you will try to poison us. You can go and plan with them to arrest and to do all manner of evil to us. But you cannot succeed. You cannot prevail. You can never, ever prevail. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. Keep your useless presidency. We don't want it. You can converse all you like. You can pay all the journalists to write all the junk they like. You cannot move us. There is no presidency. We don't want it. What we want is freedom. It's as simple as that. If you don't like it, you can go to hell. Or that is one man, one vote. There will be referendum. That's all we are asking for. And when that happens, one man, one vote. If you want the the headsmen to stop abducting Catholic priests in Delta, which is a headline on Vanguard newspaper. They abducted a Catholic priest. Some of you who are shouting one Nigeria, Loretta Onoche, this is where you claim you come from, the great harlot in Asorok. This is where you claim you come from. Suspected Fulani headsmen on Saturday evening kidnapped a Catholic priest, Reverend Father Jude Onyebade, and three of his workers in his farm along Iseluku, Isele, Bitime Road and the Ocean North local government area of Delta State, throwing the area into fear. When IPOB goes in there now to dislodge them, they start complaining, they send the army, they send the police. Now that they have come, they have kidnapped. No army, no police, nobody is shooting up the village, nothing. Because it's full, honey. That is their game plan. Loretta Onoche, you are in Asorok, supplying dead wood prostitutes to idiots in Asorok. This is what is happening in your so-called state. Have you seen it? This is one thing that fools don't understand. I was warning you before, if you're shouting one Nigeria and working for the Flanet Janja, with your village is in danger. Loretta or not your village is in danger. Have you seen what they have done? These are Fulani people. These are the idiots that you're serving and supplying filthy, dirty, diseased women to in Asorok. You can see it. She's a madam, high-class madam in Asorok, supplying prostitutes to idiots. So Fulani Janja would not circumcise in Asorok. Her village is burning. They are kidnapping priests and people in her village. As I told you before, that is what you get when you serve full and a weed. When you talk rubbish about one Nigeria, you place your village in danger. This is for Lord Tono In Go and read it up. Go and Google it and read it up. It is there very clear for the whole world. Headsmen abduct Catholic priests in Delta. It is very clear for the whole world to see and to hear. As I warned you before, we are not here, but we are Nyoma, we are Nyocha, we are Nyoji, all that rubbish. Fulani have come. Those that told you that you're not here, they have come to, to, to Delta to deal with you. <laughs> People cannot reason. But here we compel them, we force them to reason, and they are reasoning because they have no choice. They must reason. They have no choice. They must reason. And Facebook is doing all they can, as usual, to suppress our numbers. But, of course, they are joking. We have Facebook. We have IPOB Community Radio. That is where a lot of people listen to us these days on. That is the platform we are on. Very, very soon, as your firm is working very hard, we go interactive. We can begin to interact there. And then, you to hell with your Facebook. We go there. Because it will have interactive functionality. We can chat each other up. People can message us in the open during live program like this. So that the world may know. And uh, it's gone now. Heads men in Delta. <laughs> uh, they have taken the priest. Right <laughs> now, is in, is, is tweeting for Fulani in Asorok. He's <laughs> tweeting for, look at her face. It's all burnt with cream, bleaching cream. Burnt. Look at your village. Look at your village. 
useless woman. Look at your village. The people you are serving in Ashrock, supplying prostitutes to, they are the ones in your village. Their children are in your village. Ravaging your village. You are in Ashrock doing one Nigeria. <laughs> oh, people are very, very foolish. Very, very foolish. Very, very foolish. We are live and we are dead, of course. We have very... We are coming to the end of our program, but not quite yet. Ganada gas explosion in Lagos. <laughs> they say this, everything is gas. <laughs> they explode a bomb, full and explode a bomb, kill people. They say it's gas. Even when there is no gas, so it is gas. <laughs> gas explosion. <laughs> Oh God, if there is anything like next life, <laughs> Nigeria, God in heaven. Fulani have killed people in Lagos. <laughs> Several persons were killed and injured, and vehicles burnt in a gas explosion, which is Fulani terrorist attack in Lagos. Very, very simple. They, 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 they are working hand in hand with the Fulani terrorist army. Hand in hand with the Fulani terrorist army. That is what they are doing and bombing and killing people all over the place. And some idiots cannot see, they cannot understand it. Very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. And I'm sure now that the Shia have risen to complain about the film made by Peter Dutchie, I hope the world can understand that for what it is. A very, very sad case indeed. You also the nonsense written, which I will analyze, of course, on Wednesday, the letter by Garba Shehu, uh, to Commonwealth, I will analyze it in depth on Wednesday because right now we have come to the top of the hour. Our two hours is almost up. There are a lot of things that I would like to bring to you today, but unfortunately, we cannot be able to do so. We have come to the end of the program this very day, but do understand one thing if you are in support of One Nigeria, that means you want Fulani to take over your village, you want terrorists to run your lives, you want this reign of agony and mediocrity to continue forever and ever. Even those who are instrumental in rigging the now late dead Buhari into power, they are lamenting and lamenting very seriously because Fulani terrorism has taken over the place, but we are saying no to it. We are resisting and doing all we can to resist. And I am glad to say that people are now waking up, people are now rising up from all over the place and we are winning this very battle by the grace of Chukwuki Kabi Amano by anything we have been able to do so far. I thank you all for listening this very evening, morning, afternoon or night, depending on where you are. And as always, do not forget, people wonder why we are fanatical about Biafra. We are fanatical about Biafra because Biafra is our religion. Here on radio, Biafra is where we worship because Elohim Chukwukika Biafra is our God. I thank you very much for listening from me from here. Good evening.